girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to whatever this is. <laughs> um, and another live show and some experimental stuff. Hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> lots and lots of stuff to get on with today. Um, yes, and I'm going to try something uh, a bit different that I haven't tried before. And hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it. Uh, hey Alex, how are you doing? I'm going to wait for a few people to get here before I... Get on. Jason, how's it going, dude? Chris Lawrence, how's it going? How many people we got? Ah, this, this lag is awful. Penny, hey, Penny. Uh, Cockatoo, Birdman, Bill. Hey, dude, how's it going? Coffee's Forge, how's it going? Hello, everyone. Is the sound good? And you can see me. That's the main thing. Been waiting for seconds. <laughs> yeah, everyone's here. Hi, Forge Forge Rob. How's it going? Ian, hi, is it, how, hi Ian, how are you? Good, good. I've got some really cool stuff I want to share today. And hopefully, um, Kevin Colt, how's it going, Kevin? Uh, Brian from Brack, Brackenridge. Brackenridge. Howdy, how are you? Brian? Sounds fine, the guys in the screen, not so good. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Hi guys, glad you all came. Excellent, this is a good start, really good start. So um, today, in this episode, um, I've got, oh, I'm so organised today guys, uh, questions. <laughs> so they're questions from videos that were asked over the last fortnight. Um, I've also got some stuff about the Blacksmith Bible coming up. Um, Charles, evening, how are you doing? Um, I've got some stuff coming up. Uh, Jim, how are you doing? Uh, um, oh, about the Blacksmith Bible, where did I put that? Oh. So the next project that's going to be coming about the Blacksmith Bible is going to be there. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about this. This is a striker hammer, striking hammer I made with Alex. That was good fun. Um, a couple of little bits and bobs and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it and also I have some pre-recorded stuff which was extra footage that I have left over that didn't really make it into a video um, so for you guys to watch as well fingers crossed um, I've had some problems getting the sound to work through the OBS uh, which is the live stream software that I use so I'm going to be playing it uh, through my desktop and you can watch it that way so there'll be a bit of fiddling around but next time there's a live if I do the same thing I'm going to make sure it's sorted for then hopefully fingers crossed um, Alex what's wrong We're organized yes I know organized um, I've had a couple of days off as well um, which has been really nice I've spent some time with my girlfriend Ella and um, which has been really good to do that uh, and um, Feeling a bit rested up for next week. We've got a big week next week. We're going to be finishing the stairs, riveting them together, and putting them in, which should be quite exciting. Hopefully, we should have some footage from that. First thing is first, though. Now there's some of us here. This week's beer is a vice beer. Uh, it's a Rhein Becker vice beer. It's from Aldi's. If you're not from the UK or Europe, you might not know where Aldi's is. But um, now I have to use a spoon to open my bottles in the house, and the reason is I always give my bottle openers away that I've made. Hi, John. How are you doing? Uh, a little bit of a challenge. If someone can send me a bottle opener, make it, send it, I will s make them a bottle opener and send it back. I'm less likely to give away one of your bottle openers. People come over all the time <laughs> and say, oh, that's a nice bottle opener. And I say, oh, go on and have it. So um, I never seem to have a bottle opener in the house. But I'm going to be drinking this this evening. And let's get on with this. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try one of these... Um, one of the videos to share with you guys uh, and just let me know about the sound quality it's the um, first video that I put up the other day so I'm going to put that up um, Curtis how's it going right where is so you're gonna to have to forgive me because you're gonna see me clicking around a little bit uh, and I am going to
Okay, I hope that worked. Please let me know in the comments if um, everything worked then. Because uh, um, uh, it would, it's, yeah, I really want to get this to work. I, w I want, really wanted this to be in the, um, as part of the OSB, because I know you can do that. I know you can have the live stream come up as part of the OSB, but unfortunately there was no sound, so I couldn't do that. It worked. John, thank you. How cool. I didn't even know you could do stuff like that on a live stream. Yes, Penny, you can do stuff like this. Um, with a little work, you can um, be your own striker. <laughs> um, so, um, hi, hi, Jin, how are you doing, mate? Um, Ali, excellent, it worked, brilliant, so great. So I've got some really, so you may have seen that content already. So I've got a few other little bits to show you. Um, that video was us, uh, me and Alex, making some heels um, for some heel tenons that could be part of a rose arch. Um, Day Spring Metalwork, how are you doing? Wade, how are you doing? Um, good. I'm glad that worked. Excellent. Right, so I'll be able to show you some extra stuff today, so it's not just going to be me talking, um, which uh, I guess can be a little bit boring at times. So I'm going to do some questions. I'm going to show you a bit of a video. I'll do a few more questions. We'll have a bit of a chat. We'll talk about Blacksmith Bible. We'll do a few more, uh, another video, and we'll keep going like that. And I've got a few little bits for you guys. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Sorry about the clicking around on the desktop. Um, I will have it slicker next time, I promise. So, uh, first thing is first, we got to 5,000 subs. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. Um, it's incredible that there's 5,000 of you that actually care. Hey, Big Dog, how's it going? Hey, Tim. Um, I, it's incredible that... Um, uh, it's incredible that um, 5,000 of you actually turned up uh, or actually have chosen to subscribe, and every one of you is super important. So thank you very much for that, um, and thank you so much for everyone who's supported the channel along the way. Um, I've got stuff coming, I've got loads of stuff coming, hopefully the new structure of the channel is going to help it grow a lot better. Uh, you care, Alex. Um, <laughs> hopefully the channel structure is going to be a lot better, and from this day forward we can continue to grow and make a really exciting channel. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, that's the plan at least. Anyway, uh, the next thing I'd just quickly like to talk about is Tuesday's video. And I apologise, there was supposed to be a video on Tuesday. Um, I did record it and um, I did edit it and then as I was watching the editing through I couldn't get the sound to work on one of the videos. There was like this really weird bzz, bzz, bzz noise and it was all, it was awful. Excuse me. Um, but as a consequence there's some extra footage which I'm going to show you this evening. Uh, and um, they, um, that footage I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I'm really sorry about that. I'm really trying to get this down. 8 p.m. Oh, sorry, 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning, uh, British Summer Time or Eastern Standard Time, or, uh, not Eastern Standard Time, um, GMT, G uh, Greenwich Mean Time. There will be a video coming up, and then subsequently on the Thursday, there will be a video, and then once a fortnight, there will be um, another video <laughs> uh, of me live, and hopefully we're going to get it in the workshop at some point. That's in the future. Um, Anyway, but we'll see what happens. Um, and also, another thing that happens, which is really great, which I'm really enjoying, is the community section. You guys in the comments having a chat whilst watching this video is really cool. It's really amazing. Hopefully, uh, you're enjoying it. I'd just like to say now, I can't see you comment during the videos. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to talk to you whilst the video's on, but hopefully, um, hopefully that's not a problem this time. Next time, I should be able to get it a bit slicker so it just comes up on screen without me having to mess around on my desktop and stuff. Uh, and that brings me on to community. Uh, and the thing I'd like to talk about is... Um, uh, uh, the thing I'd like to talk about is... Um, well, it's twofold, actually. Um, uh, cock cock bill someone bill uh, cockatoo co cock cockatoo birdman bill said to me how come someone got to see some footage uh, 19 hours before he did even though he was a subscriber he rings the bell and also um he is a patreon um thank you for being a patreon by the way patreon is a great way to support the channel if you want to help um um and basically, I have been putting extra f content up on the community section. So if you go to my homepage along the top, some channels won't have this because they haven't been given. It's still a, be uh, a beta, uh, I believe. But basically, what you'll have is you'll have things like um, home videos. Uh, there's something else. And then it says community. If you click on community, that will give you a drop down. And in there, there'll be all the extra stuff that I've been posting. I post extra pictures. There are... Um, 
uh, sort of like surveys where I ask questions saying what would you like to see, how would you like to see it, how often would you like to see it, uh, what video would you like to see next, I've done a few of those. There's some extra video stuff that came up which are unlisted links which you can get access to if you go to the community section uh, and basically that's all it's there for. Um, so hopefully you guys um, Hopefully, guys, you are getting that information. Now, the problem is YouTube is absolutely screwing with, like, the notification settings. Um, so people... Um, Dennis, hello. Uh, BB Forge, B and B Forge, hello. Um, um, Buddy Bell. I hope that's right. Uh, Grandad's Forge. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, guys, uh, if I've missed anyone, just say hello again down there, and I will, um, I will uh, give you a shout-out. Um, but basically, um, YouTube is messing with the subscription, uh, not the subscription setting. Well, they are messing with the subscription settings and the notification settings. If you have subscribed, you're not necessarily going to get notifications. If you're not getting notifications, it's because of your viewing habits, apparently. Uh, meaning that um, uh, it's like Sunday church tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, literally. Uh, so it's um, it's your viewing habits that will determine whether or not you'll get notifications of my videos. Um, so basically, if you watch, if you don't watch any of my videos until the weekend and then you watch them, you don't watch them when the notification comes up, it just thinks you're not bothered anyway and you'll watch them whenever you get around to it, basically. Um, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much what the... Um, what's going on with the notifications. So keep an eye on everything. If you're if you're if you're a couple of days behind and you haven't seen something, uh, sorry about the autofocus. Sometimes if I come out a bit far and go in a bit close it doesn't it's a weird or what if it's not gonna do it. And it's probably gonna get me in trouble doing that as well. <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, Chris Lamax I'll email you. Excellent. Email me Chris, that'll be cool. Um, so anyway that's basically it. If you're not seeing stuff, it's because YouTube isn't telling you, and it's more likely to do with the fact that you save up videos and watch them at the weekend, uh, as opposed to watching them when they come out. It's not a problem. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't affect you. You don't have to change the notifications. I just think YouTube have have got to the point where they're getting lots of complaints about daily bloggers or daily vloggers, and um, they're getting bombarded. Um, they're getting bombarded with um, notifications from daily uh, vloggers, daily YouTubers, and people are like, I don't want any of this crap. I like their channel. I like to pick and choose what I want to watch, but I don't want to get notifications all the time every time they post a bloody video. Some people post like three videos a day, and they're getting notifications all the time. So, um, uh, habits, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, I don't know what's going on in the comments. I lose track of it. So, uh, Hammer Hammer is in the house. Nice. Somewhere safe for it. Did you use it today, Peter? Because that would be awesome if you did. Um, Liam Buck. Hey, dude. How's it going? Evening. So, um, basically, that's the first thing I want to talk about. That's the first three things I'm going to talk about. Um, and now I'm going to show you uh, the handrail being fitted. So, uh, just bear with me. Um, Okay, so I'm out on site putting the handrail in. Um, you may recognise it, it's been in a couple of other episodes, and I'm in a very beautiful garden that belongs to the owner, uh, the customer, uh, and um, I'm just, I wasn't gonna do any videoing of this part, but I, I think it's good to do. So um, here you can see I've dug a hole for the bottom rail, and that's the top rail there, and the handrail and things. Now I've just dug this hole here um, and I have put this, I welded this bar onto the um, the bottom of this piece and I also have added an additional amount of material here so I can concrete this in. Uh, in hindsight I probably should have gone a little bit deeper but this is hollow uh, in here, this is hollow and I'm hoping that uh, some of the concrete is going to get up under there but um, uh, two bags of postcrete or maybe one bag of postcrete in there is going to be more than enough to give um, plenty of stability to this object uh, which is cool and then I'm going to be using um, some uh, some raw uh, some um, anchor bolts in here to fix this second one in
Okay, so I've used a bag of this ready mix stuff. It's um, a very ballast heavy, this one. Uh, there's lots of chips in it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gone quite well. It's quite quick drying stuff. Um, it already feels fairly stable. Uh, and it's nice and in line with that step there, which is nice. So, um, yeah, looking good. Uh, you're supposed to pre mix in the hole. Um, you're supposed to pour the contents of the bag in and then add water, but I've had them where they haven't gone off properly. Uh, so I always mix them in a bucket or a trough or something like that because it just makes my life easier. I know that that's cement down there and not fluff, basically. Right. Okay, so I drilled the, one of these holes in this uh, block here um, to see what was going to happen. And um, I always suggest, <clears throat> if you're going to start drilling holes in stone um, and you don't know what the stone is, Drill it without the hammer on, <laughs> because I've drilled sandstone before with a hammer on, and it's just blown the sandstone to pieces, uh, which is never good. Um, so basically, <clears throat> what I want to talk... <clears throat> so basically, what we have here is the first hole that I've drilled. And I want you to note the distance from the edge here. This is this hole here. Uh, that's this hole here. And it's at a reasonable amount of distance away uh, from the uh, edge of the stone. If you're working right tight here, you can find sometimes you'll split the stone where it's quite close to the edge. And these being uh, quite a soft stone anyway, it's quite, it's quite easy to split stuff if you're not paying attention. Okay, one finished handrail. So I need to, well, almost finished, I just need to replace these. We have a bit of a problem with some bolts today. And uh, I've got two, two holes to fill just here, but I've got to come back anyway. I've got some more bits to do. But... Uh, there's the rails there. Nice long span. A bit risky with that long span, but it looks good, which is the main thing. With nice brass pins there. Just like that. Right, back to the workshop, I reckon. Okay, uh, hopefully you managed to see all of that. I'm just going to uh that's tidy looking good okay hopefully everyone um managed to see that and enjoyed it hopefully it was a bit more enjoyable than just watching me talking and stuff but let me know i'm really curious to know what you guys think of this uh sort of little experiment that i'm trying um unfortunately uh, that was going to kind of be tuesday's video um or thursday's video but thursday's tuesday's video ended up becoming thursday's video after i sorted the sound out so there wasn't actually a video and i really apologize about that uh but we're going to sort it for this week, hopefully. Um, so that's going to bring me on to the next thing I'd just like to talk about, which will be uh, sometime this week. We'll be making the second project. Well, we're not making the second project out of here. We're going to finish off the first project out of here, um, which was um, <coughs> page 34, if everyone remembers rightly. Or was it 36? I'm trying to Oh, I said I was prepared. <laughs> yeah, 36, page 36 of the uh, Blacksmith's Bible. And we are going to be making ah, we're going to be making the dividers here, uh, and um, I'm going to make a, a video for that. Show you how to make the dividers, not in great detail, but just sort of an overview of things that I think are important to be doing whilst making a video. The book is fairly self-explanatory. Unfortunately, the subjects that have been put in this book have no measurements and they have no great detail about the construction, so I'm sort of winging it. Um, but I thought as an extra bonus, I would try and forge a unique material that some of you guys might want to try in the future. Um, so, um, you're going to need to get yourself about um, 400 millimetres or, oh god, so uh, 12, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 6, 16 inches, about 16 inches uh, of uh, this um, sort of a medium carbon steel. This is 16 mil square or 5 8 square, and that's what you're going to need to get yourself. I'm going to end up chopping this in half and forging the bits on uh, for the pointy bits for the compass. Um, you're also going to need to get yourself um, some sort of screw of some description. This is a 6 mil screw, so uh, it's a 6 mil screw, and I'm, the thread is probably just a standard fine thread. Uh, for, for a metric setting, so um, it will be 6 mil will be 1 mil uh, pitch on the thread. Uh, and if you are, uh, no, Alex, 50, 3 quarters is 20 mil. Um, so basically, um, <coughs> uh, for this, you're going to need a quarter inch uh, UN, UNF, uh, UNF uh, tap 
or something if you're in America um, and that will give you um, the size hole that we're going to need for the pin to tighten up and then what we're going to end up doing is forging the end into sort of a, like a little wing nut um, and also we're going to be forging some brass and these bra the brass parts are going to be part of the slides and I might even make the nut and stuff out of brass um, and I'm going to do a little bit of forging on the brass and I thought it would be interesting to show you that um, because I don't see very many people forging it. It's the devil's work. As far as I'm concerned, it's the worst stuff to forge in the workshop ever. Um, it does two things which are really bad. It hot shuts, uh, sorry, it gets, um, oh God, I've forgotten what it's called. Um, oh, something red it's called and it's basically where the uh, material um, the material uh, gets so hot it crumbles at uh, red short it's called it gets red short and it gets something called um cold cracking uh, and and that's basically uh, red short is if you overheat it basically reticulates and falls to pieces uh, and, and uh, cold cracks are basically where you take it out of the forge when it's hot place it on the anvil and it cracks because the anvil's cold and that's basically it so it's a nightmare um and it'll do it at a moment's notice you'll have about eight hours into something and then crack just like that. It's a nightmare. It's horrid to work with. Um, brass is not particularly good at forging. You get brasses that are good for forging. So you've got Coldia A and Coldia B. They are forging brasses. Bronze forges, okay. It's not great, but it's better than brass. Um, and anyway, that so on and so forth. Brass is a pig. Bronze less so. Thank you, um, Ian. You said it there. Red short. That's the one. Thank you very much. Um, what's this? Uh, now that I have a good brass, it's worked out. Blank bounce. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to ignore that one. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. Lead forging. No, I'd rather not forge lead. Alex? Is that where brass is usually cast? Um, I, I, so Pete, Peter Tucker, uh, Tricker, Tricker, Peter Tricker. I call you Tucker all the time, and it's Tricker, isn't it? Uh, anyway, I'm an ass. Uh, when it comes to words, uh, names. Uh, so basically, um, this piece of brass here is rolled, uh, it's got hot, it's a big lump of metal, and then draw it out. Um, it's quite ductile to a point, and then it stops being ductile. In the factory, they do very well in making sure that this stuff comes out rolled. You can see that this is rolled, it's got lines on it. You can see this lines here, running up and down the material. That's the rolling lines. So this was forged, technically, cast brass. Um, uh, I, I, more often than not, it's cast bronze. Um, but you do get cast brass as well. Um, um, but yes, you can forge it. It's a bit of a bugger. But um, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. Um, oh, okay, cool. Uh, that's Curious Forge. Um, I, I will ignore you. <laughs> County Line Forge, how long... Uh, have you been smithing down uh, about eight years now uh, if you include my um, short period of working with the blacksmith who was more of a welder fabricator um, but um, yeah about about eight years in total uh, I did three years on my degree at Hereford College of Arts I did the artist blacksmith degree and then I went on and um, uh, and then I've been basically self-employed I worked for um, Roger Lund for a bit I worked for Dave Perks for a little bit um, which was good fun, and I'm trying to think of who, no, no one else really that was basically who we worked for. So, uh, Danny, can you use uh, any old iron gates for anything? I, if I cut it up, can I use it for like key rings and old bottle openers? Penny, Penny's asked a good question. She's asked about recycling old gates. How old is the gate, Penny? Um, if the gate is at, like 80 years old, there's a good chance it's wrought iron and, and that's slightly different material. It needs to be worked very hot, wrought iron. Um, Joey's doing a good, Joey van der Stag is Stig, or however you say his bloody name, um, is very, um, is doing, um, is doing a series or was doing a series about forging raw iron. Um, I haven't got any in the work, or I have got some in the workshop, but it's really crap. Uh, it keeps falling to pieces. Um, but basically, nice and warm for raw iron. If it is, if it's not, it's probably mild steel. And yes, cut it up and make what you like out of it. Bottle openers, uh, key rings. Um, you could probably make it into companion sets, whatever. I don't know what material it is, size material, obviously, uh, but give that a go. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. Um, hi, Dan. Just saying a quick hi uh, from France. Uh, Kevin G. 
Uh, by the way, best tongs and sugar tongs are sugar tongs. No tongs, no sugar. One T. Sad, underperforming Smithy. <laughs> Too true, sir. Um, uh, Ginge, you can recycle anything unless it's uh, rusted to bits. Yeah, Ginge, you're quite right. You can pretty much recycle anything. Um, so, yes, that's I did the Bible, didn't I? And I told you guys what you're going to need for next week. And we're going to try the brass. Um, it's probably going to break for me. And if it does, I will show you. Because um, it is a nightmare. It's genuinely, honestly, some of the hardest material I've ever had to forge. Um, uh, not as in it's tough, as in it's difficult because you need to be very patient. You need to have lots of skills. You need to work at a very low temperature, but not too not too low, uh, but not too hot. And then you need to, well, I, I wouldn't personally pre-warm my anvil, but I will do some forging on the anvil before I go to use it, use the brass. That way the anvil is slightly warmer, so there's less chance of this um, cold cracking. Um, but yeah, it's a bugger. It really is hard work. Uh, so we're almost about halfway through the video. I want to make sure that I play all the, um, the clips. So I'm going to do another one now. Uh, and this one is of me and Alex making the first lot of tenon, so hopefully you enjoy it. So hopefully uh, this is being shown on the live um, and everything worked okay. I'm sure Dan in reality is telling you <laughs> this. This is weird because I want to explain it but at the same time um, Make it seem seamless and slick, <laughs> which some of my editing isn't. <laughs> Alex is here. Say hello, Alex. Hello, guys. <laughs> and we've got these bars in the fire. Nice and hot. Some 25 mil square bar. And we're going to start forging some tenons. Uh, some, first, we're going to upset some heels and then forge some tenons. So I'm going to show you that. And, um, yeah, basically just a bit of fun in the workshop today. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be locking, um, we're going to be locking the 25 mil bar in the Massey. And then using some sledgehammers, we're going to upset it. And uh, Alex is going to be helping me.
Sorry about those little pauses where I have to sort my life out and um, get the video back going. Let's get you guys up again. Open this one. Cool. How was that? Um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. Is the stream health still good and everyone can still see me? Hopefully. Carmen, even Anthony, sending. Was that any good, guys? Or so, I don't know whether or not it was good. Dan, do you know Chris Smith near Plymouth? I worked with him for a couple of years back. Uh, yes, we see you. Excellent. Cool. Um, no, I don't know him, uh, Kevin G. I don't know uh, Chris Munich. Um, but I will see if I can find him out, uh, perhaps. Uh, cool. Lovely. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Me and Alex were making some tenons there. And you can see how using the power hammer like that is super efficient. Um, locking it up underneath the uh, pallets of the hammer and then blocking it up. But I'm going to talk about that a little bit in, um, in another video that I have for you guys, uh, for you to enjoy. Um, we've got loads of people here still, which is really, really good. Uh, Plymouth, UK or US? I'm sure it's uh, US. He was talking about it's French, isn't he? All the videos are good. Many people never see those techniques. Uh, not even me. I'm making up, Ginge. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I've got some questions here that I've got from some of the lives, uh, from the, some of the videos that were up recently. Um, Milan, um, that was his name. Uh, what, uh, what steel is good for hammers? Uh, Alex very kindly um, replied, um, I use fork truck tine. And fork truck tine is brilliant. Fork truck tine is made of boron. Uh, boron? Boron. Uh, it's a great material for making hammers out of. Um, but um, at the college, they use EN9. Uh, EN9 is, um, I've got it written down here, 1055 equivalent um, and makes a reasonable hammer. Um, it's um, it's not going to be very tough uh, because it's basically a, a, a medium carbon steel. So um, uh, that means that um, it's it's good, uh, but things like chrome and stuff uh, are going to um, greatly improve the toughness of your steel. So um, in in um, in uh, answer to what I would use is I would probably use an EN19 equivalent. So somewhere in the region of EN9T or EN9CU or EN9A, somewhere around that. But the EN9A and the EN9UC or CU or whatever it is, I can't remember what it is now, uh, is going to cost you quite a bit of money. Uh, a same is a 4140. There are also modified equivalents of that as well. So they're different, slightly different alloys, same content of carbon and chrome or silica or whatever they are um, but then they'll have like a little bit of extra vanadium or a little bit of extra um, sulfur or I don't know they'll have something extra in anyway um, but they are basically the sort of materials I would look for if you're looking for a new material uh, to make hammers out of so that is um, EN9 or if you're in the States or somewhere else a 1055 or an EN19 uh, if you're looking for something a bit posher um, which is a 4140 or 4145 I think might even cover that or if you want to recycle I would definitely go for a boron um, or some sort of drive shaft, a particularly large drive shaft you want something in the region of about 55 mils or just over 2 inch so something like that would give you a reasonable size hammer I would have thought uh, it, still a lot of work to do without a power hammer if you can't draw it down but um, I have a video on this uh, definitely go and check it out it's the one magic metals uh, basically, um, Grandad's Forge is the book on your website. No, because I still haven't sorted the website out. But if you would like to, um, if you would like to, uh, <laughs> if you would like to get hold of the book, send me an email, and uh, we'll have a chat. I've got a hammer coming out to you soon, anyway, uh, Grandad's. Um, so let me know, and we can sort something out for the postage or whatever uh, with that, so we can get the hammer out to you as well. Okay, would you say EM36 would work for a hammer, Dan? I have no idea what EM36 is. Uh, and people say this all the time. They give me a number for a material, and I'm like, I've never heard of it, so I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to lie. Um, if you go online and you search for materials, if they, they'll they probably say in their data sheets, uh, high tensile, uh, medium or high carbon. Um, sometimes high carbon is used for medium carbon steels. Um, and um, uh, what was I going to say? So medium high carbon steels. Uh, it'll also say it's great with impact resistance. Uh, it's good for um, uh, good stability under stress or strain. Those sorts of things you're looking for if you're looking on a data sheet. So if EN36 says that, um, I would go with that, basically. Um, uh, you've seen... Uh, I, 
southeastern. That's one of the miles we're going in. So now it's dry, so it's not important. Cool. Uh, so, um, is everyone enjoying this so far? Um, it would be really nice to know, get some feedback as we're going along. Um, uh, Dayspring Metalworks, how are you doing? Apparently his name is also Kev G. Um, <laughs> I dislike because there isn't enough Alex. Oh, okay. Well, that's typical Alex. <laughs> right, okay. Next question was from uh, Ein Simbin, Ein Simbin Forge. Knives and Tools by Tim Brown made a comment, uh, and then there was a comment from Don uh, Wallian, which said, uh, "What uh, would a slot punch before doing uh, round holes uh, prevent this?" Uh, basically, what he was referring to is a video where I talked about um, the 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 cold shuts you get when you forge material over that's too thin, uh, and um, uh, and uh, it, it basically makes this cold jet. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go check out the video. It was the one where, I can't remember which video it is. I'll find out in a second and I'll let you know. Um, but basically, um, but basically, um, even if you slit the holes, you'll still get the crack up here. So it's not, there isn't any real way to get around this problem, this deformity. And like I said, I'm by, I have bought material that has come uh, that has this cold shut in. It's normally the end of the bar that they've rolled out that's got this cold shut in. Um, uh, and unfortunately, unless you've um, unless you've got um, uh, thank you, Alex. It's a cut tongs video, so if you want to find out what I'm actually talking about, but basically, it's the end of the bar, and um, because they only grade the the very centre of the bar for like uh, structural use, so some material is graded, so they know where it's come from. So railway track, for example, is good for this, and um, then they'll take tests and samples, um, and then they'll code it, and if it fails or breaks, they'll destroy it in the future. Uh, and they know where they've sent it and which part of the train track it's on. But they do the same with normal steels as well. And normally the ends of the bars definitely have these shuts in. They're sold to Joe Blogs like me, but if people are doing structural work with them, they will send them coded material and you pay more money for that. So, um, uh, yes, that's basically the answer to that question. It's going to happen whether you slit it or punch it round or no matter what happens. Um, so, uh, one last question. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to put another video up. That's the last video, and it comes from Thomas D. Hey, Daniel, um, whatever happened to part two, uh, you making uh, the handle and wrapping it? Question mark. So, um, and I'd like to bring this up as a bit of a subject uh, and get some feedback on it because it'd be um, it'd be interesting to know what you guys think. Uh, not so long ago, I made an axe, uh, not an axe, like a machete thing from uh, Lord of the Rings, the Urukai machete thing Lord of the Rings video. I was trying a different tact with the video. I don't think I'm going to potentially go down there much much more than, um, you know, I might do the occasional one every now and then, but they don't, you know, it's not where the channel is at the minute. Um, but the reason I made it is because I was trying something. Uh, um, yes, there will be a part two to that video. Uh, yes, um, I will be putting wooden handles on it, and bolting it all together and then wrapping it. Um, and then getting it nice and sharp and heat treating it and everything, but um, I'm not going to be doing that for a little while because the channel's got lots of stuff going on and I've been a bit sort of reconstructing it so that we've got some structured videos, so the Blacksmith Bible videos, um, there will be the stuff for me making stuff around the house like these rose arches, that's what those heels were for that you just saw. Um, uh, do, do, do. What else was there? Um, I've got the Tong series to do. Um, I've got an anvil reface that I'm going to do. So really predominantly working towards getting you guys good content that you can use in your workshops more than basically making stuff from fantasy stuff from videos. Don't fall to the dark side, Dan. No, don't worry. There's not, not much chance of that happening. I'm more likely to try and build something crazy like a steam engine before I end up making uh, any more swords or knives. I'm not interested in doing that. Um, it's not, not my flavour. Uh, cool. Okay, I'm going to share one more video with you. This is the last video. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about how we use the hammer to do the upset. And then uh, we'll finish the video off. I think we, yeah, I'll do that now. So you'll have to bear with me again. So there you have it, that's our little heel. I almost took Alex's hand off, which was hilarious. Well, it wouldn't have been hilarious if I'd actually taken his hand off. 
I made some good camera footage though. But there it is. And uh, with this type of um, uh, with this type of heel, you find quite often find this side tapers up. But for because I'm going to be putting a tenon on it, um, that's what we want. So we, I need more mass here so I can forge it down. Oh, not even filming that. So I want more mass there, this end, so I can cut in and then forge that down that way. But it's uh, one inch, 25 mil by 40 mil, which I think is an inch and three sixteenths or something like that. Now what we need to do, it's the other side, but I've got one in the fire, we can do the other end first, let that cool down a bit. We have them. Alex has done a bit of filming for me as well, which has been lovely. Uh, so we've got what basically what I've got to do is match these up to this one now. Um, and uh, we upset this one earlier. It's a bit of a tester. That's the one we've just done, and that one's uh, the last one that we need to do. And basically, I just wanted to talk over what we were doing. So Alex has a block of wood here. This block of wood here, this big piece of Sapili, and then um, he's written some nonsense on there. And then with this big old bit of 12 mil angle iron, and then we were putting that putting up, it here. up here on the back of the hammer. Now, if I put the bar through, which would reach, it would be hitting up against this cast iron, and I don't, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think I want that hard piece of metal smashing into this piece of cast here because it might cause some damage. So basically, by putting this piece of by putting this piece of wood in here with a piece of angle iron on, um, that's giving me a bit of support. And then on the massy, so I'm going to start the massy up. So this, you might not be able to hear me very well. Start the massy, Alex, and then put it into the hold up position. So this is what we call high pressure hold up. I'm going to remove this block, and then Alex is oh, I'll leave that under there. Uh, so hang on Alex, wait a second. So Alex is going to clamp down on that. And this is a high pressure hold down. So it's a clamping function. Um, so the mass is actually producing air to hold that. Just put it into neutral so they can hear the difference. Oh, hold up. Uh, you can put it in neutral from there. Just go straight to neutral. So that's a neutral. So that's a neutral position. Slick, Alex. <laughs> so that's a neutral position. You can hear the note change. So if I put it into hold up, 
uh, and, and to hold down. Neutral. Oh, you'll, you'll be, you might, might not be able to move it still. No. I didn't think you could. All right. Okay, there we go. That was the last video. Uh, hopefully that explained what we were doing and um, hopefully you enjoyed it still. A um, little bit different, like I said. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to experiment, make the make the videos a little bit more exciting and give you a bit more information until we can get the lives working from the actual workshop. So, um, ever use a to mould your... Do I ever use plasticine to mould um, or processes? Um, I've never had any luck with it. I just tend to find that it moves a bit too easy compared to metal and uh, therefore um, I don't really use it. But it is a good thing to do. If you're trying to develop a shape, getting a piece of plasticine and uh, or a bit of clay or something like that and squeezing it into shape to work out how it's going to work is, uh, is a very good is a very good process. Uh, yes, uh, Tim, Kitty is a hell of a strong beast and... Um, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to make use of such a um, wonderful piece of kit. Uh, so, um, uh, Vinar, Vi, Vi, sorry, dude, you're gonna have to say me what your uh, what your short name, Carl Lassen, was, because I'm just gonna ab abuse your name again. Plus, I'm a beer and a bit in, so that doesn't ever help with reading names. Um, hell of a hold, it's a hell of a hold flask, Penny. You're quite right. <laughs> and, and it makes a good power hammer as well <laughs> to be honest with you I've got one last question I'm going to go through uh, and Len Blacksmith asked me if I was going to do uh, any more hammer swinging techniques um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the injury based element of the swinging of the hammer technique I think it's important to understand what's going on when you're swinging a hammer and the sort of injuries that can be occurred um, from um, swinging a hammer that's either too big or the handle's wrong or it's too long or if you're swinging it incorrectly. I will go over some more. Um, I will go over some more. Um, Wally is cool. We can call you Wally, dude. That's good. I can remember that. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to go over some techniques to help uh, make sure that guys and girls are swinging hammers properly. I don't want to get into the controversy that comes with swinging a hammer. I mean, we've been swinging hammers since the dawn of time. If you, whatever. I'm not going to get into an argument um, about forging technique. I want to talk about hammer technique and help you guys protect yourself. So uh, hopefully uh, that will, um, you know, hopefully that will be good for you guys to see that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's everything. That's all the questions I have. Um, do you guys have any questions for me at all uh, that you'd like me to answer or any ideas or views on today's episode and whether or not you liked it or not? Because um, I'd love to hear that. Uh, so next Thursday will be Blacksmith Bible, and I think uh, this Tuesday will be some more of the Rose Arch, I think. So, um... <laughs> yes, Alex, please bring fruitcake tomorrow. <laughs> Hammer technique, hold the wooden end chaps. Yes, uh, Kevin, yeah, hold the wooden end. Uh, swinging hammers, one rule, don't hit your shin, yes, that's, that's also a good tech, uh, a good hammer technique, don't hit yourself on the shin, <laughs> that means you miss the anvil at some point. Uh, we'll have to look through your content again, got my poverty anvil going, having a bit of trouble with drifts, drifts through though. Uh, I, uh, um, Wally, are you having trouble with um, forging the drift or are you having trouble with getting the drift to go through? Uh, it's a pleasure, Tim. Well, no, uh, Ian, I wasn't having a dig, mate. Um, I just, I, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get into that conversation. Dan, do you play an instrument? Ting, ting, dance, Tom. Tom plays banjo. Um, I play the bass, double, not double bass, electric bass. Um, people actually eat fruitcake. I thought it was uh, for doorstops. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Ginger. If you have any info on Spark testing to send, I'm 
Cool. Nice one. Send that to Penny. Spark testing. I've never had any luck personally, but um, it's because I am too impatient, I think. Uh, forging firstly. Uh, yeah, they're long old bits of bars, aren't they, mate? And to turn into a drift. Um, I don't. Did I make a video on forging a drift? I can't remember. There might be a video somewhere on forging a drift. Um, but yeah, it just takes uh, takes a bit of time, mate. Um, and patience is a virtue. Uh, so uh, keep going. I'm sure you'll get there. Um, oh, thank you very much, Alex. You're a gentleman, as ever. Uh, there was one there that I wanted to read that I didn't read. People actually eat fruit cake. Dan, are you going to get any colour in that koi tat? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, because um, oh god, this sounds terrible. Story for another time. I will I will I will share another time, but not right now. <laughs> uh, my strike would get um, even Next video, Dan eats fruit cake. Anybody interested? Alex, you're a weirdo. <laughs> uh, what? What octave? What's that? Sorry, I missed that one. Um, thank you for the vote of confidence, Dan. I don't. I, I, if I've offended Wally, I apologise. But it does. It just takes time. You've just got to get down and get dirty. Uh, did you hear? Of the poor guy that starved to death near Christmas, got snowed in at a fruitcake factory. Sad. <laughs> oh God, I, I'm pretty sure that's a bad Christmas joke and should only be told around Christmas. I've never had any fruitcake, Miss Penny. Um, you're missing out. Considering that a lump of lump on a stick. It's funny how bent out of shape folks can get moving it from A to B. Yes, it is ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, thank you very much, Alex. <laughs> get Kitty squashing the fruit cake. Um, oh, what are we? Oh, Christmas pudding is technically fruit cake, guys. Come on now, it's just like fruitcake in a slightly different form. But um, I'm sure, do you know, every time I make a video where I squash some food, someone goes, oh, people could have eaten that in another country or something. It's all based of food. Like, oh God, seriously, it's a fruit cake or Christmas pudding. Most of it gets thrown in the bin anyway. <laughs> so, Uh, <laughs> okay, has anyone got any questions that they might like to share? <laughs> A pasty and happy note of this fruitcake nonsense please. <laughs> Westgate. Uh, Dan, did you finish the stairs job? I may have missed it. No, uh, there was going to be a little bit of footage here today but unfortunately I chose to leave it out because um, I'm going to be riveting them up next week uh, which will be tomorrow. Not tomorrow but yeah next week tomorrow uh, and uh, they should be in Friday slash Saturday perhaps Monday depends on how badly I get on. Um, but yes, they are not quite done yet, but they are coming. Uh, oh, I never take any notice of them, Peter. <laughs> we put in fruit cake with. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, we're spiraling into chaos now, I see. Any questions, anyone? I possibly may. Uh, Damascus Hammer? Yes, um, I, I've just got to get a handle on your hammer. Um, Tim, and then I'm going to send the two out, and then I will make the next one. But I'm doing less videos, so it's it's on the list to do. There is a list now of videos I want to make. Uh, Dan, you need to let folks know where to send you a bottle opener. Uh, ping me an email, and I will send you my address, so you can send me an email if you would like to send me a bottle opener because I really need one because I can't. I mean, I use a spoon to break into bottles. Where's that spoon gone? This is what I use to get into bottles because I'm always giving my bottle openers away. I'm perfectly capable of making one, but making one once a week 
just to take home is hard to remember. And I've got a lot to do, you know, remember? <laughs> Okay, any more questions? I've got about four minutes. Um, I've got uh, the forge of my tongue blanks down, just struggling with drifting and riveting. Um, but at least I have learned from my mistakes. Mistakes are a good place to learn. Um, I, I don't like call failures, mistakes. They're not really failures, mistakes. They're just you learning how to get around it. And if you're talking about small drifts, um, um, what you basically want to do, because I, I may have misunderstood what you're talking about drifts, so every time someone mentions drifts, I think they're talking about hammer eye drifts, everyone's obsessed with making hammers. Um, ba basically, um, if you want a drift that's your whole diameter, and you want a, a length of it, so I don't know what, three or four centimetres, um, if in inches, what's three or four centimetres, about uh, three quarters of an inch, no, a bit more than three quarters of an inch, so over an inch um, of material uh, at like a shank, basically, and that's going to draw your hole out. You want to forge a small taper on the back end so it releases as it goes through. If you use mild steel, make that longer, otherwise you look like an idiot on a video like I did recently. Um, excuse me. And then you want a nice long taper coming down from your starting hole uh, back to you where your shank is, and hopefully that will give you a nice uh, tapered drift and it should release and do everything nicely. Thanks, Alice. <laughs> You'll have to come over. Na, 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 na. Uh, JC would, would be a good time to get. It's all good, man. Uh, just having some fun at your expense. Thanks, Tim. I'm glad we're having fun at my expense. Uh, sitting here on my birthday watching you. You make great videos, Dan. I learn from everyone of them. Keep up the great work and thank you for teaching us. Uh, uh, Darwin. Shreve, Shreve, sorry, Darwin, I've butchered your surname, but thank you, that's very kind of you. Um, hopefully, that's the point, I guess, but thank you to meet you, John. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. Oh, yes, and also, happy birthday, Darwin. Um, uh, I hope it's a lovely 21st. <laughs> uh, one of my favourite quotes, I never fail, I either win it win it I learn I never fail I either win it I learn happy birthday Darwin uh, thank you for the advice Dan yeah cool question uh, why did Japanese kamikaze pilots wear crash helmets it's a good question <laughs> god oh dear or, oh, okay, sorry, stupid or correct. Uh, cool, uh, Grandad's. Which group did you put that link for me on? Was it forging it forward? Yes, I did. I'll get back to you soon. Do, 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 gin, chow, and same things. Uh, nope, 50. Lol, thanks for the birthday wishes, everyone. Darwin, 50. Hopefully, I get there. <laughs> I'm sure I'll upset someone along the way. <laughs> <coughs> cool. Uh, go check out the Forging Forward. Um, I haven't been on there for a while. Um, I don't really use Facebook. It's um, it's a little bit toxic, if you ask me. Um, um, but uh, yes, definitely go and check out the Forging Forward. It did seem like a really nice place. Uh, 10 p.m. Last orders. Definitely, I've got to go down to the fridge and get another beer because I managed to finish mine this time. Because normally I'm talking and you listen to me for some reason. <laughs> So, cool. Okay, well, um, uh, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, a lot of you guys are having your own conversation over here, and that's epic. I'm really pleased about it. Remember to go and check out the community section. That's where I post um, all sorts of stuff on there um, for you guys to see. In fact, if I just, I might be able to. One second. I don't want this to go really laggy. That's the only problem. Uh, YouTube. Um, okay, let's just go click on here. I'm going to put you over.
Yeah, lovely. Hopefully that's all suited. We're working tomorrow. Good night, Alex. Is it nine or ten over there? Uh, I'm back to uh, do a bank holiday. Alex, Dan, I'll text you for the address. Yeah, cool. Okay, if anyone wants to send me a bottle opener, that's cool. Um, I did want to talk about this. I am going in just a second. I did want to talk about this. This is a striking hammer. I just want to show how big it is because someone thought it was small. That's uh, a one and a half pound hammer there, and that's uh, that's a striking hammer. <laughs> it's a fair beast of a thing. So um, it weighs about five pounds. It's got a reasonably long handle. That's going out to John at Black Bear. Um, cool. Okay, that's everything. Thanks, guys, for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did enjoy this video, to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, ring that bell for notifications. Go and change your notifications so that you get notifications. I don't know what the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, cool. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I am going now and um, see you guys all later. Thank you for joining me. Happy birthday to Darwin. Um, that's everything. Thanks for joining me, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.